write me a pasta grammar video intro about testing if chat GPT can cook Italian food. Welcome to our latest episode of Pasta Grammar, where we explore the art of Italian cuisine. Today we are putting ChatGPT to the test to see if it has what it takes to cook up a delicious Italian dish. Join us as we uncover the secrets to cooking authentic Italian pasta with a little help from our AI chef, ChatGPT. <laughs> That pretty much sums up what we're doing today. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know that the AI-powered chat GPT is changing the world as we know it. But is it changing Italian food as we know it? Today, we're gonna ask this artificial intelligence to write us recipes for some of our favorite Italian dishes. I'm a little bit worried making this video that by the time, because like, okay, the technology is changing so quickly that by the time I get this like edited and released, it'll be completely outdated. Like we will have achieved the singularity and our new robot overlords will have already like banned Italian food completely. Spaghetti is not logical. The only logical pasta shape is penne liche. Okay, I think we should start with something real simple. It's a simple, basic pasta dish that everyone can cook. In my mind, it comes pasta allo scarpariello. That is simple, delicious, doesn't use a lot of ingredients. It doesn't take long to cook. So that's one of our favorite go-to really simple dishes. It's what we recommend like everyone start with if they're new to Italian food because absolutely anyone can cook it. What What is pasta allo scarpariello for someone who's never had it? Pasta allo scarpariello is uh, pasta with uh, cherry tomatoes or a very good ripe tomatoes. Uh, nothing really complicated. All right, let's give it a shot. Give me a recipe for pasta allo scarpariello. Pasta allo scarpariello is a classic Italian dish that in typically includes pasta, sausage, and bell peppers in a tomato sauce. This is not pasta allo scarpariello, Harper. No, but pasta, sausage, bell peppers, tomato sauce, could be good. Okay, so I've written the recipe down here, and the first thing we need to do is cook the pasta, and it recommends penne or ziti. What are you going with? I'm going with penne liche. All the humans must eat penne liche. I'm a big fan of penne liche, maybe the only one in the world. I'm going with penne liche. So penne liche is a penna that hasn't the ridge. ridges, the regatta. Yes. So it's completely smooth. So let's say that this kind of pasta is in between a normal penna and a zit. Can I start to cook the sauce, Harper? Uh, no, it specifically says that you need to cook the pasta completely and then set it aside while you cook the sauce. And the pasta will be completely destroyed by the time that I can use the sauce. I think we can start prepping the other ingredients, though. At least Harper. So we need some sliced sausage, some diced tomatoes, some sliced uh, bell peppers. We'll also need some minced garlic. Minced is like that. Minced is like super, super finely chopped, like more than diced. I think this is the first time I've ever seen you mince garlic. <laughs> Maybe yes, Harper, but are you sure that there is written a sliced row? Yeah, it says they, they should be sliced and then you cook them sliced. I don't know, but I don't feel uh, very confident with this recipe. Personally, I don't like diced tomatoes. I much prefer the whole peeled tomatoes because at least you see that there is a good whole 
tomatoes and uh, the whole peeled tomatoes they achieve the same result if it's not better so are you questioning chat gpt they see are pair but i start to question just chat what's his name <laughs> His name is Chat GPT. Chat GPT is that the question when she made me cut uh, the sausage roll and when she made me cook the pasta before the sauce. So, so Arthur, the pasta is ready. Okay, so you need to drain it and then set it aside. Without anything on top. Okay, now you can cook the sauce. I hope so. If we don't want to wait until other 20 minutes, I don't know. Quickly, the pasta is getting ruined. It's not my fault. It's the fault of ChatGPT. GPT, what's his name? Okay, so in a large pan, cook the sausage until it's browned. No olive oil, nothing. No olive oil. Yeah, I didn't really think about it at first, but slicing the sausage raw is maybe not the best way to do things. Normally, Arper, you slice a sausage after it's cooked. You cook the whole sausage and then you slice it. <laughs> they're like sausage balls. No, they look very bad, Arper. All right, so now that they're browned and crispy, we take them out of the pan and set them aside. Like the pasta. And now in that pan, you add some olive oil and you saute the peppers and the garlic. All right, basically you just cook those until they're tender. I don't have to add any liquid, nothing. No, but in a minute we'll add some wine. Okay, so now you need to add some white wine, diced tomatoes, salt, pepper, and some red chili pepper flakes. Now you let it simmer for five to 10 minutes or until the sauce thickens. 20 minutes later. It smells kind of good. Uh, yes, because at the end the bell peppers, they are good. <laughs> okay, so now all you need to do is add the pasta and the sausage in and mix them together. She's not in a very good shape. <laughs> Oop. Okay, last thing is we have to serve it and then top it with uh, fresh basil and Parmesan cheese. Hey, can you use Parmigiano Reggiano? No, it says Parmesan. Plastic. Okay, I think we should try this before this pasta sits any longer than it already has. Is it ready at that body? Okay, buon appetito. Buon appetito. Okay. <laughs> no, you tell. Well, for starters, if, if anyone were to repeat this recipe, penne is probably the worst shape possible for this. Also, the pasta is by far the worst part of the dish because it's pretty, uh, okay. how would you describe it? Chewy? Gummy? As we say in Italy, it's that. He lost completely the al dente thing that makes a pasta good. The sausage and peppers 
That's a classic combination for a reason. That's not bad. Eh, si, Arpen. Sausage and pepper, they are perfect together. The problem here is that if this condiment, if this season is okay for pasta, and most, if this is a scarpariello. <laughs> well, it's definitely not scarpariello. It's almost a good sausage and pepper dish. Skip the pasta. Skip the pasta. Add some potatoes. You will have a very... <laughs> You will have a very good uh, side dish or second dish. Should we find our next recipe? Si, Arper. Maybe we, we will be a little bit more lucky. They call you Lady Luck. So I think that Scarpariello was actually kind of hard for ChatGPT because I don't think in the English language the term, the name of the dish Scarpariello is very... Famous. Well known or famous, so I think it probably didn't find a lot of info on it. So I think we should do a pasta dish that has a lot of information about it in the English language, and that is spaghetti a la sassina, which is funny because when we made our first video on spaghetti a la sassina, there was not a single video or blog post available online, at least as far as we saw in the English language, but now it's everywhere. Everyone's making it. These spaghetti alla sastina, they are peculiar because the first thing is that you cook the spaghetti in a pan and not in a pot. The other peculiar thing is that the spaghetti actually they are a little bit burned or maybe it's better if we say caramelized. It's a little bit a tricky process, but believe us, it's amazing. I think that it might have a better chance of finding this one. Cross finger, how do you say in English? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. How do I make spaghetti al assassina? Spaghetti al assassina is a dish originating from Naples, Italy. So from this you can understand that chat GBT <laughs> is from Bari in Puglia. It is a spicy spaghetti dish, that's true. Typically made with garlic, red pepper flakes, olive oil, and anchovies. There is not a small trace of anchovy in the real spaghetti alla sassina. Parsley. What if I, hang on, let me ask a follow-up question. Can you give me an authentic pasta al assassina recipe? Sure, here's a traditional recipe for spaghetti alla sassina, also known as spaghetti alle asciughe. Anchovies, again. Why does it think that? That's weird. This doesn't look too bad though. Spaghetti, olive oil, anchovies. Should we try this great example of traditional Neapolitan cuisine? I bet that this can be a little bit better than before. It looks pretty good, let's try it. So this seems promising because we're gonna cook the pasta while we cook the sauce. Okay, while the pasta cooks, we can heat up some oil over medium heat. Then we add the anchovies and cook them until they dissolve. If it happens that you are going to do this recipe, be careful, because if the oil is too hot, you put down the anchovies, the anchovies, the oil start to, how do you say it? Splatter. Splatter everywhere. Okay, now we add some garlic and some uh, uh, red pepper flakes. Okay, so this time the garlic should be finely chopped. But I like before all. No, that was minced. And what's the difference? I, 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 don't, I don't actually really know. You're the cook. But I don't speak English, it's not my native language, so maybe there is something different that I don't know. Guys, leave a comment down below. What's the difference between minced and finely chopped? <laughs> Can I put some pasta water? The recipe doesn't say you should add pasta water, but I think that I'm gonna allow it. So I can, no? I think, I think, that's, I think that's fair. The sauce is basically done as far as the recipe is concerned. I think that this can be a very good plate of pasta. <laughs> I think so too. I think this is gonna be really good.
Okay, so stir them all together and then season with salt and pepper to taste. I am put salt here. There is the anchovies. Some black pepper I can, but salt to forget. Also because salt to raw in the pasta like that. Okay, and then we can serve it with some parsley on top. Oh, this is weird. Serve with grated Pecorino Romano cheese on the side. I think we should call this dish Spaghetti al Assassini. Get it? Assassini. Assassini. Like artificial intelligence? Yeah. Okay, we have our spaghetti. Alasasini. We have our cheese weirdly served on the side. You probably would never serve cheese on an um, anchovy pasta, really, would you? No. If there is something that I should have here, if I could, is some breadcrumb. Ooh. So. I have high hopes for this, actually. I'm pretty sure that this is a very good plate of pasta. Bon appetito. That's delicious. See, Arpero. That's a good plate of pasta. It's a classic pasta that we do in Italy. So it seemed to think that pasta all'assassino was pasta, pa pasta alle asciughe. Is that a real thing? Is that what you would call this? I would call this pasta with anchovies, yes. Pasta con asciughe, because then at the end, it can be like an aglio, olio, peperoncino plus anchovies. Nothing strange. The only thing is this is not pasta la spaghetti la sassina. Yeah, I don't really get why. I mean, there's so much info about spaghetti alla sassina now. It's weird that it wouldn't. The way in which this chat should work is read all the information on the internet and give you a result. So maybe there is some uh, article that we don't know that called this pasta la sassina. <laughs> no. Should I put this, should I post this recipe? I'll post it down below if anyone wants this recipe. We'll also put the real spaghetti al assassina though, if you want to try that. But this is a very good anchovy pasta recipe. Well, this is promising. Should we try one more? Yes, Arthur. But this time uh, we asked uh, ChatGPT to give us a recipe of something that it's a little bit more difficult. I got a bad feeling about this. Okay, what did you have in mind? Arpi, in mind I have a dish that is uh, part of myself, it's in my heart. So we should ask her or it to give us a recipe for kuriki. Oh boy, okay. So kuriki are a very regional Calabrian dish. They are a normally savory potato donut, super delicious. I am fairly certain that we are the only people who have released an English language recipe for kuriiki, so I don't think it has much to work with, but we can try. Give me a recipe for Calabrian kuriiki. Calabrian kuriiki is a traditional dish from the Calabria region of Italy. Here's a simple recipe. One pound Calabrian chili peppers, olive oil, garlic, oregano, red wine vinegar, and basil leaves. So that would just make a sauce. sauce. Okay, that's not right. Maybe we can try with a different name. Yeah, they're all different kinds of regional names. What else are they called? We'll try with the name of Zeppole. How about a recipe for, but it's gonna think it's just the normal dessert. Calabrian zeppole? Calabrian zeppole are traditional Italian fried pastry. No, this is just the sweet dessert. Oh, they should be savory. I want savory Calabrian zeppole. Calabrian zeppole can also be made savory by omitting the sugar. No, no, we want potato donuts. Is there any other name that they go by? See, Arpel, maybe try with Kuduredi. Kuduredi? Uh, this is definitely not Kuriki, but it is an intriguing recipe. Now, intriguing, Arpel, is a big word, but let's try and see what comes out. 
Okay, so we need semolina flour and warm water. Okay, so mix them together in this bowl. You need to knead the mixture for about 10 minutes until it is smooth and elastic. Uh, how I can... Just knead it. Just do it! Well, this can't be smooth and elastic. You see, it's liquid. Can I add some flour? I, I think we have to. Actually looks kind of good. See, the vegan is pasta. Divide the dough into small portions and shape each portion into a small ball. It, it gives no indication of how small. Like this? I, I guess. Flatten each ball into a disc shape and make a small indentation in the center. And now just put a, an indentation in them. I put what? <laughs> a small, a small indentation. So I think like, you just kind of push a... It's an hole. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. We're gonna pour a teaspoon of olive oil into each hole. Where is the salt? At the end. Uh, on top? Yes. Fill her up. That is so stupid. <laughs> okay, and now we let them, we put them in a warm place and we let them rise for one hour. Rice? There isn't a yeast to how they rise. <laughs> One hour later. Hmm, nothing happened. Mama. Okay, well now we need to bake them at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes or until they turn golden. Are they becoming golden? A little bit up there. And the oil is frying. <laughs> Okay, now we, we season with salt to taste before serving. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but... But this is the result. Hard? I sort of thought when you put them in the oven that the olive oil would maybe seep in a bit more or something, but it's just... It's just a, a total pool of olive oil. I'm not really even sure what to do with it. The only thing is like you can't bite into them because otherwise all the olive oil. So you need to put the olive oil there and let, let's use the olive oil as a dip. Oh, so maybe you pour the olive oil and then sort of... You see okay. how smart yeah. chat GBT. Hmm. It's al dente. It's more than al dente. Buon appetito. <laughs> Buon appetito. It could be worse. <laughs> so maybe use some salt. Maybe you can use some salt. Maybe you can use some yeast. Or at least you can put the olive oil inside the dough. You know what it reminds me of? Ah. <laughs> there is something that it tastes like this? <laughs> yeah, in actually, yes. I used to be a sailor, and sailors back in the day would eat something called hardtack, which was the simplest bread you can imagine. It was flour and water, and then baked until it was rock hard, even harder than this, because it would last forever on a sailing ship if you're like sailing around the world back in the age of sail. And I've had it and it kind of reminds me of that. Chat GBT made the bread for the sailor. Definitely the weirdest one. I mean the first pasta like it wasn't very well 
cooked the way it instructed you to cook it. But the end was edible. But it was, uh, you know. Edible. Yeah, it, it could be, you could see where it was coming from and it could be a good dish. The second one was just a great pasta dish. This is like the chat, the AI just had like a weird fever dream about Everything. I was about to say Italian food, but not really, just food. Come to think of it, it is impressive that it almost got the shape of kuriiki. Speaking of which, we will put the real recipe for real kuriiki down below. Really though, you gotta be careful like searching for stuff on this because it's so confident. You know, it's like, this is the answer, but it's just totally guessing about stuff. You actually, you kind of got to be careful about this stuff. Maybe the artificial intelligence sometimes can help us, but just keep to the human intelligence how to prepare food, maybe a suggestion for a recipe because... Well guys, we hope you enjoyed our look at the cooking capabilities of ChatGPT today. For lots of recipes that were not generated by artificial intelligence, go check us out at pastagrammar.com. If you try any of the real recipes behind these dishes, let us know, tag us in a picture on social media, at pastagrammar. Also check out our merch down below, it helps support the show. Thank you for checking it out. All right guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Later that same evening. So Eva just made me some sausage and peppers for dinner. Buon appetito. Are they good? Yeah, very, very good. Just get the pasta. Good on you, ChatGPT. Good recipe.